With any dream, the wind won't always be at your back, the sun won't always be shining, and some rain is going to fall. American Family Insurance is like a good solid roof that you can trust to protect your biggest dreams. With plans that could save you up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto. Also, you can continue to dream fearlessly, no matter what comes your way. American Family Insurance. Get a quote or find an agent at AmFam.com. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. You know when you're really stressed or not feeling so great about your life or about yourself? Talking to someone who understands can really help. But who is that person? How do you find them? Where do you even start? Talkspace. Talkspace makes it easy to get the support you need. With Talkspace, you can go online, answer a few questions about your preferences, and be matched with a therapist. And because you'll meet your therapist online, you don't have to take time off work or arrange childcare. You'll meet on your schedule, whenever you feel most at ease. If you're depressed, stressed, struggling with a relationship, or if you want some counseling for you and your partner, or just need a little extra one-on-one support, Talkspace is here for you. Plus, Talkspace works with most major insurers, and most insured members only pay a $25 copay or less. No insurance, no problem. Now get $100 off your first month when you go to Talkspace.com slash podcast. Match with a licensed therapist today at Talkspace.com slash podcast. Talkspace.com slash podcast. Welcome to mini episode 150 of Real Life Ghost Stories. And I have six spooky stories for you today. And the last story comes from October the 28th, 2021. And story number one comes from James. I'm a milkman and work in Stafford. So as you can guess, I'm out in the early hours of the morning dropping off milk and bread. One morning I was driving down Tixel Road, about to stop for a delivery, and I noticed an old man. He must have been about 70 or 80, standing at the curb. So I thought, strange, I'll ask if he's okay. So I pulled up and got out and he walked up to me and asked if I know where 208 Tixel Road was. I told him that yes, it's next to where I was delivering to. We chatted for about five minutes and he left. I was about to get into my van when a dog walker tapped me on the shoulder and asked me who I was giving directions to. Apparently I spent five minutes talking to myself. There was no old man. However, I still see him all over my round. When I see him, I smile and wave, and I even shout hello to him. This is like the actual reverse of the fabled Canterbury Milkman ghost that definitely doesn't exist. I like that you continue to see this old man on your rounds and just say hello to him. That's, I think that's really nice. Do you feel freaked out by it? I don't know if I'd feel freaked out by it. I probably would. But then would I? I don't know. What if the the dog walker was just trying to wind you up? (laughs) I don't know if they would, but it's also a possibility. And story number two comes from Dennis. Around seven years ago, a very close friend of mine passed away suddenly. We hadn't been very close at the time because as life went on, we drifted somewhat, still remaining friends, but our lives took different paths, so to speak. But we had, for a short number of years, been like brothers in closeness and we would always be around each other. We used to spend our evenings and weekends working on his project car in the garage, about 30 metres away from the back of his parents' house. There would often be a few of us there talking and messing and working away and he would normally go inside and make the tea and we would keep an eye out for the way from inside the kitchen window to let us know the tea was ready and in we would go. About six months to a year after his passing, His brother asked me to have a look at his car which was having problems. So on my day off I went around to see what I would do. I knew where the key would always have been kept for the garage and I just made my way in to have a look at the car and I'd give a walk in to say hello if I saw anyone in the house from the garage because since he wasn't there anymore I didn't like just walking in as it didn't feel right to me without him being there. I was working away and I was there probably 30 minutes and didn't see any sign of anyone so I didn't bother going down to the house but I glanced down towards the window and saw someone standing there washing their hands at the kitchen sink inside the window, and I could see them dry their hands, 
followed by a beckon to come down from the shed. I thought nothing unusual of it and I finished the couple of bolts I had left to tighten on whatever I was fixing and made my way to the house, expecting the door to be open as it would be when they were home. The door was locked. I looked in the window and saw no trace or sign of anybody inside. I thought it was strange and I knew my friend's brother was not at home, but after seeing someone call me in and the door being locked I was a bit confused. I called out hello a few times but there was nobody home and no response. I started to get a bit worried, so I rang his brother and he answered and I asked him who was at home. He told me nobody was there as they were all at work. I didn't tell him what I had just seen, nor did I tell any other family member. I was absolutely in a state of shock. It blew me away. I absolutely 100% no doubt in my mind saw someone who I of course believed to have been my late friend call me in for the tea. I haven't been able to bring myself to go to the house much since. I just cannot go there. It absolutely scared the life out of me. It was my first time experiencing such a thing. Being so soon after his passing, it very much affected me and it will always stay with me. Maybe someday I will visit and maybe I will tell his parents and siblings what I saw. I couldn't do it at the time as I was afraid of upsetting them. My next story is about another close friend that passed away after a very short illness in hospital 10 years ago. He used to buy and sell old Toyota Corollas, a very well-known man for his red Corolla van in a North Cork town. I don't like using names, but the people who knew him, if listening, will know exactly who it is I'm talking about. He sold one of these cars to a guy, and instead of filling out the logbook and sending it away himself like you're supposed to do, he just signed his name to it and dated it and gave the logbook to the buyer to fill the rest and send away himself. A year passed and my friend got a letter in the post saying that his car that he had sold, still registered in his ownership, had been found to have agricultural diesel in the fuel tank on a public road, so being the registered owner, the fine of €2,000 came to my friend. He was furious and had no intention of paying it when it wasn't him, so he and I, having a good idea of the area the person he sold it to was living in, spent a couple of days driving the back roads of that area in search of the car. Unfortunately, we never found the car, and instead of fighting it, he just paid the fine to have it over and done with. I think it was two years later that he passed away. Roughly a year after his passing, I was in a very well-known scrapyard outside of the Listowel side of Tralee, looking for parts for my car, when I stumbled across a Corolla. Having an interest in those cars at the time, I went towards it. Not realising at this point what car it was because it was in a bad state of disrepair, and at the bottom of a stack of two more cars. The glove box was open. Inside the glove box, I could see a logbook. Being a nosy fucker, I took it out and opened it for a look. It was the car he sold that had got him this big fine three years previously, still in his name and his signature and the date on the logbook, as he had written it when selling the car. I mean, what are the chances of that happening by chance? Even if I did find the car, I wouldn't have ever known it was that particular car because it was fucked and in pieces and half it was missing. Without this piece of paper, it was just another Corolla. The logbook was just sitting in the open glove box as if to say, look at me, here I am. I still have that logbook. I've laminated it and I will always keep it as a reminder. I believe there is an afterlife. I believe there are things that are more than just chance. Stone tape theory has come up so much in the last couple of weeks in particular I mean I know it's a paranormal podcast it's going to come up every so often but it seems to be coming up quite regularly at the moment and anyway that's what was in my brain when I thought about when I was reading this story was stone tape theory that maybe it was some of the happiest times for your friend when you were all fiddling away at this car and he'd go in make you guys a cup of tea call you to come in when the cup of tea was ready and maybe you being there tinkering with the car released some sort of energy and maybe his spirit was able to come back and enjoy that moment again and I really do think that in terms of the Corolla I think that weird things happen after people die weird things happen that maybe you could put down as coincidence but it seems just a bit too weird to be just a coincidence and maybe the afterlife isn't as clean cut as you can come back as a wispy ghost and go and sit on somebody's bed or something whatever it is maybe the afterlife is 
demonstrated to us by those strange little moments that just make you think. And story number three comes from Kai. My first story started when I was 14. I was living in a house with my mom, her partner and my baby sister. For just the four of us, it was a little too big, so it always had an odd feeling. Like no matter where you were in the house, you'd feel a sense of being off, if that makes sense. This house was active. Even a friend of mine's phone suddenly acted up out of nowhere and stopped working completely. Along with that, it was the typical lights being on when you were sure you would turn them off and cold spots. My biggest experience was our last night. I say it like that because we didn't stay the night. We were just finishing loading our rental van to move things into a new house. I was helping my mom's partner with loading the van. I made my way back from the van into the house to bring something else out. I walked through the front door to get more things. And as I walked in, clear as day, I thought I saw Soren, my mom's partner, walking from the kitchen to the dining room. I was so sure it was him that I almost went after him calling his name, only to hear him answer me from outside. To this day I wonder what would have happened if I just walked after that shadow. My second story is shorter. I was staying at my dad's house in Dublin city centre, a small flat. There was one room for the living room and kitchen and the other was the bedroom. The bedroom also had everything to do laundry, the washing machine, clothesline, whatever you'd need. My friend was over there for the night so she was a witness. Earlier my dad did laundry and I helped so I know what happened wasn't just a coincidence or whatever. My friend and I were walking into the bedroom and just as we walked in, the washing machine door flew open. Not a slow, subtle opening. It opened so hard it hit the back of the door off the machine. My friend ran out screaming, but I was frozen. I even went over, closed the door the way I did earlier that day and tried to open it without pressing the button to release the lock. Nothing. It wasn't dodgy, that's for sure. I just don't know how else it opened so fast on its own just as we walked in. My third story was from when I was eight. This one is also one I can't explain. I lived in an apartment with my mam, just the two of us. My mam was across the road doing the food shop and I was in the apartment alone. I was sitting playing with my dolls facing the window of our balcony. When I looked up I could see a dark figure running from behind our couch to where the hallway was just across from the couch. I was terrified and called my mom crying. If someone broke in, I would have heard them make a run for it and a door open and close from them making an escape. They weren't in the house because being the brave and probably stupid eight-year-old little girl I was, I went searching for someone that broke in. I didn't find anything. To this day, I don't know what happened and have absolutely no explanation. The more we hear these doppelgangery stories where... Somebody sees a member of their family and they think it's them. They're not freaked out by them because they're like, oh, it's my dad or oh, it's my mum's partner or whoever it is. And then suddenly they realise it's not that person. Those stories, those stories are very fast becoming coming weighty in my mind. You know, I think about them a lot and I, and I just can't figure out what is going on there. And I too would wonder what would have happened if you'd followed that shadowy version of your mum's partner. Like what? Where would they have taken you? I always think as well there's something really particularly interesting about kids who witness things because they don't try and dress it up they don't try and explain it away they don't try and make excuses they just see something and they report what they see and they say oh I saw a shadow figure or oh a man came into my bedroom and I think it was granddad whatever it was there's something quite naive about their experiences which actually make them really earnest because they just accept them for what they are it doesn't make them any less scary that's for sure so, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando Resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 US and DC. 18 plus enter by 4223. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited. And a one, and two, and three, and a... Oh, hey there. 
Staying healthy can get, well, sweaty. That's why I order up post-workout drinks with Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices on the biggest selection of beer, wine, and spirits from local stores and get them all delivered in under 60 minutes. No sweat. So download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. This podcast is sponsored by Talkspace. You know when you're really stressed or not feeling so great about your life or about yourself? Talking to someone who understands can really help. But who is that person? How do you find them? Where do you even start? Talkspace. Talkspace makes it easy to get the support you need. With Talkspace, you can go online, answer a few questions about your preferences, and be matched with a therapist. And because you'll meet your therapist online, you don't have to take time off work or arrange childcare. You'll meet on your schedule, whenever you feel most at ease. If you're depressed, stressed, struggling with a relationship, or if you want some counseling for you and your partner, or just need a little extra one-on-one support, Talkspace is here for you. Plus, Talkspace works with most major insurers, and most insured members only pay a $25 copay or less. No insurance, no problem. Now get $100 off your first month when you go to Talkspace.com slash podcast. Match with a licensed therapist today at Talkspace.com slash podcast. Talkspace.com slash podcast. And story number four comes from Heather. About two years ago, my boyfriend and I met up with his best friend and best friend's girlfriend in San Diego to enjoy a weekend of bar hopping. We rented a small Airbnb a few blocks away from the gas lamp district in downtown San Diego, where it was six or seven blocks of all bars and restaurants. Our rental was small. It was located behind a small antique store and was two stories. The ceilings were so low that standing at the third or fourth step of the spiralling stairs, my boyfriend's head could hit it. The top story contained only a bed, where his best friend and his girlfriend slept. My boyfriend and I slept in the living room on the pull-out couch. The living room was so small that when we pulled out the couch into a bed, it touched the sink cabinets. We didn't mind it though because we were only going to be there for a weekend. The first night there we went bar hopping immediately and came back to our small rental around midnight, all properly wasted and sharing a $40 pizza that we were too drunk to realise the cost. After we ate we went off to sleep. That first night I woke up suddenly at four in the morning and just laid there. My eyes were wide open and I sat up to look around the room. Although I couldn't see anything, I felt a presence. It felt like something was watching me, like someone wanted to make itself known to me. I sat up in the same position looking around for a few minutes before laying back down and scooting really close to my boyfriend before I even had the courage to close my eyes. I was afraid and I prayed until I fell asleep. The next morning I woke up with a mild hangover. I didn't tell anyone about what I felt and decided to not even mention it until we left. We got breakfast and then went bar hopping again until 11pm when we returned to our small rental and finished off the night with a movie and some edibles. That night I had a dream that I woke up and was sitting up again exactly the way I was the night before. Everything was pitch black but I could feel someone crying. I felt someone was sad, although once again no one was around. For some reason I didn't feel scared. I was more curious. I remember in my dream as I was peering around, looking for something to tie those feelings to. I suddenly laid eyes on a figure standing crouched at the bottom of the stairs. It was a lady. Although she was in shadows, I immediately knew she was in her mid or late twenties, in a white blouse with flowers on it. She wore jeans and had brown hair. Suddenly, I was thrown out of the house. I now stood in a field of dead flowers, and in the distance was a barn house, that although it didn't look like the small Airbnb anymore, I knew my boyfriend was in there still sleeping away. The sky in my dream was cloudy, with lightning and thunder going on in the background, and the entire view was yellow as if it had a filter on it. I couldn't see her, but I could feel that she was getting closer and closer to my sleeping boyfriend with the intent of doing something to him. I wasn't sure what she was going to do, but I just knew she was. I said loudly into the field towards the barn, If you even dare to hurt him, I'm going to kill you. I suddenly was thrown back into the Airbnb. This time I was sitting on the edge of the pull-out bed in the dark and kneeled down in front of me was the girl. Her makeup was running down her face from crying and her hair was so wet it seemed as if she'd been out in the rain or something. 
She was crying and I for some reason felt bad for her. I knew at that moment that something bad had happened to her and I felt it in my heart that it was by someone who loved her. I put my hand on her head and told her gently, it's okay you can go now. She continued to cry and shook her head reluctantly like saying she couldn't. I told her gently again, it's all right you can go now nothing is going to hurt you. She then looked up at me and her face grew gentle. She seemed to trust me in what I said to her. Then finally she softly said, thank you, to me. And just like she was never there, she disappeared. I suddenly woke up from my dream wondering what that was all about. I looked up into the kitchen to look at the oven clock and to no surprise it was 4am again. Only this time I didn't feel scared. I felt rather at peace knowing that she had passed on and felt slightly sad that she was now gone. I said a small prayer anyway and went back to sleep without a problem. Our final night there I slept soundly. I didn't wake up at 4am and feel a presence and I'm guessing it was because that soul that was trapped in our world had been released. On our way home from San Diego I told my boyfriend what had happened to me for those few days and he told me that something happened to him too but he didn't want to tell anyone in case he'd spooked us. He said that on his first night there He suddenly jerked awake at 4am and felt afraid. He felt as though someone was watching us sleep from the kitchen and was terrified. He turned to face me and prayed himself before going to bed. He then told me that his best friend told him that he was having nightmares too and that he hadn't told anyone because he didn't want anyone to get scared. I don't think of that time much anymore but whenever I do I always wonder how that woman is doing now and if she finally escaped and found peace. I hope she did. Ugh, I hope she did too. Because it does not sound like anything pleasant happened to her, whatever did happen to her. And how interesting that afterwards your boyfriend and your boyfriend's friend both had similar experiences and everybody didn't want to say anything because they didn't want to freak anybody out. Initially, at the beginning of this story, I thought it was just going to be another case of sleep paralysis because alcohol can induce sleep paralysis, but it didn't sound like sleep paralysis at all because you sat up, looked around, were aware of your surroundings. So that's really interesting. I remember years ago when I had my experience in the mental health facility that I used to work at. And when I had my experience and I spoke to a psychic about it at one point, and they said, I mean, you can take this with a pinch of salt, believe what you will, that the reason that this woman had appeared to me and the girl that I was working with at the time was because we were of a similar age and she felt like a kindred spirit. You know, she felt like we would understand her or understand what she was going through. And I don't know whether I don't know whether I believe that or whether people in general listening to this will believe that. But, you know, maybe that's why this woman appeared to you, that she felt that it was, you were a kindred spirit and that she was able to do that and that she was able to show you in some way what had happened to her. And story number five comes from Connor. My name is Connor and I'm five foot eight or six foot on Tinder and way more than I should. My first story takes place where I used to work on a farm. Some evenings me and a couple of others would stay late and do some pest control. Not nice, I know. I couldn't do it anymore. But it was what we did back then. Every evening we would go around the same route. Start at the house, past the oak tree and around the fields. Now this house was very big, very old and very creepy. Something didn't feel right about it. But I'm a sceptic, so didn't think there would be anything scary. We made our usual start, past the oak tree and around the fields. As we walked back to the oak tree, we saw something, or rather someone, hanging from it. Instantly, we panicked and ran towards it, but as we got closer, we noticed that something wasn't right. Hanging from the tree, but with no rope, was a woman in a long white dress with black hair. We stood about 15 feet away from the tree, just staring. After about a minute, Jack pulled out a flashlight and shone it at the woman. But nothing was there, just the tree. So he flicked it off and there she was again. Flicked it on and gone. After doing that a few times, we glanced at each other and hightailed the fuck out of there. We never saw her again, but still felt eerie every time we walked past that tree. Story number two takes place only a couple of years ago around Christmas in 2019. One night, a night like any other, 
I was having real trouble falling asleep. I tossed and I turned, but I could not sleep. At about two in the morning, I decided to lay on my right side, facing away from my door. Nothing unusual about that. After a few minutes of laying there, I heard my door open. It was a creaky door, so it was a freaky door. I assumed it was my mother just opening it for no real reason, other than mums can be a bit strange sometimes, but that's why we love them. I decided to not look up so she would think that I was asleep and close the door. But after about a minute, I got a really strange feeling up my neck. That was not my mum. I slowly turned over to see what was at the door, but stood at the door, the silhouette of a short woman. Not unlike my mum. However, this woman didn't stand like my mum. Her hair was a mess, and she was a larger woman. I panicked a bit, hesitated, and tried to open my eyes a bit more. As I saw this thing's grey eyes, she grabbed the door handle and slammed it shut. I just about shit myself. After a few seconds of sitting here and hearing nothing outside, I got out of bed, slowly opened my door, and there was nobody there. So I quickly went to my parents' room, opened the door, and saw my mum very much asleep in her bed shut the door, went back to my room and spent the next two hours trying to sleep. I assume it was maybe a type of sleep paralysis or something. I don't know. I've never had it before and haven't had it since. And it felt very much like I was awake. When I woke up the next afternoon, I asked my mum if she had opened my door and she had been asleep all night. Again, maybe it's probably nothing, but that's what I experienced. My third story is a nicer one. I had a dog, the best dog you could have. She was a black Labrador. Her name was Duchess, but we just called her Dutch. When I say she was the best dog, I'm not kidding. She was a chubby, old barrel of a dog. We got her like that, and she was too old and stubborn to do anything about it. She was quite fond of her morning routines, though. Every day she would come upstairs, sniff at my door until I let her in, then come with me downstairs for her cup of tea. Unfortunately, she passed away in October 2014 and I was heartbroken. Even though we didn't have her for long, I'd never had a dog before and loved her with all of my heart. Every single morning was a reminder of her, as the routine was changed and it messed with my head. A couple of years later, I was suffering quite a bit with depression and anxiety. It was really bad, to the point I couldn't see a future, only an end. One morning, I was awoken by the sound of sniffing at my door. I went to open it and there was nothing there thought nothing of it until a couple of weeks later when it happened again. I was both happy to think that she was there but also sad that she wasn't. Not long after that I hit my worst point and one night when I was asleep I had a dream. The most vivid dream I've had. My Dutch had come back to play with me. I can remember saying to her that I didn't understand. I know that she had already passed but she was there and it was so real that when I woke up it was like a weight had lifted. I truly believe she came back to comfort me in that one little dream. Things are much better now and I thank her for that. Like I said in my first story, I'm a bit of a sceptic, but I believe her spirit came to me in my time of need. So there you go. There are my ghost experiences, if you can call them that. Not really as scary as some I've heard in the podcast, but they are what I've experienced. Now before I finish, there was a couple of things I forgot to mention. Part of the reason I got so into your podcast is because early on you guys said you live in Canterbury. I'm Canterbury born and raised. Another thing I'd like to mention, and you don't have to believe me, but I promise you this is 100% the truth. Your story about the whistler really gripped me. Especially when you played the whistle at the end. You see, when my dog was alive, I'd be walking home drunk and do that exact same whistling noise just so she would know that I was on my way home and she would always be excited before I got through the door. I'd never heard of the whistler before, but I mean it when I say it is uncanny how similar the whistles are. My mum picked up on the fact that I do that whistle and started doing it back when she heard me coming home. We still do that whistle to this day. When I listened to one of your episodes today, I wondered if you may have encountered me one time. It was episode number 47, The Girl Who Wasn't My Sister. Emma talked about hearing a whistler, and it turned out to be some guy walking home. It might not have been me, but I would love it if it was. I'm sorry, Connor. I'm just going to say this now. If you were the whistler all along, I'm going to be really annoyed. Like the paranormal whistler. 
as well as being the one that I saw that night. I don't live on the same street anymore, so it was on Zealand Road, in case you're wondering, in Winchie. That's where I saw him. I was outside my house. I was in my car. It was dark. I heard this whistling sound. It really freaked me out. I was like, what is that sound? And then it turned out to be a man walking home. It was quite late. Maybe they were walking home from the pub. I will be so impressed if this was actually you because what a small world when I lived on that street too there was also a man who used to be going to work every morning at about like eight o'clock or nine o'clock and he would be singing at the top of his lungs and I used to look forward to it every morning because I'd be like I wonder what song he's going to be singing today he was a very good singer but singing at the top of his lungs please tell me that was also you because that was less paranormal much more enjoyable that first story was horrific about seeing the girl hanging from the tree And the thing is, you don't know what's happened over the years, over the decades, over the centuries in certain places. If it's a big oak tree, it means it's been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. And you don't know what's happened there. And generally, when you do that three o'clock in the morning, the clothes on my chair look like a man sitting there. When you turn on the light, you see what the shape is and what is making that shape look like it's something else, look like it's something paranormal. So presumably, if there was something on the tree or in the tree or around the tree that was making that shape that made a shape that looked like a woman with a white dress and long hair you'd see it when you turned the light on but obviously you didn't oh that's I don't like that at all that really that really freaked me out and again I understand you saying you know maybe it was a type of sleep paralysis but it doesn't sound like sleep paralysis because the point of sleep paralysis is that you're paralyzed you're not able to move And because you're not able to move, your brain starts to fill in the blanks of the world around you and create something horrific. But this sounds like it was quite a sustained experience where you saw this woman and she slammed the door shut because she was watching you. Remember that story of like the person who saw this weird doppelganger of their mother, but it was like a doppelganger that was just wrong and the doppelganger saw the person in the house and just literally ran away ran away screaming going no 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 when the when the person saw the doppelganger Uh, that's what this story reminds me of I hate I hate all of the stories today they're they're all putting me giving me heebie-jeebies except when it's a good dog story I love a good dog story and skeptic or not I believe that that is your dog coming back to look after you in your time of need we all know the dogs are endlessly loyal and they love their owners fiercely so if there ever was a creature that was going to come back and look after you in your time of need it's going to be a dog even more so than a human and story number six comes from adriel i used to have a dream for nearly a month that wasn't weird for me but when i shared it it suddenly became really scary i was standing at the entrance of our living room with my mom crouching down as if she was trying to protect herself from something behind her There was very little light. My mom looked at me and asked, Did she come? To which I would reply, No, mom, who was supposed to come? She then closed her eyes and mumbled something, and then behind her appeared a lady floating. The lady was wearing a wedding dress with her veil on, and her full body was black and white. Only the flowers she was holding were coloured, which were small yellow petaled flowers, and I don't know exactly what the flower was. She was staring at me with no reaction, so my mom again asked me, Has she come? I told my mom, Yes, she has come. Who is she? She is black and white. My mom replied that she was black and white because she had a dark past. After this, I used to hear my family members, my dad and my uncle, talk and get up. In June the same year, one evening, my uncle was talking about his childhood and about how he used to sleepwalk and open the door thinking that someone was calling his name. And my mom confirmed this too, since he was my mom's brother. Listening to that, I explained my dream. After listening to my story, he went silent, and he didn't speak for a long time. He asked again and again for the details of my dream. I felt that something was wrong, and I asked him what was happening. And he told me that this was the same lady he used to see in his dream. Because the way I described her was the same way that he saw her too. But he knew the lady. Unlike me. It was his grandmother on his maternal side. My great-grandmother. I told him I had never seen my great-grandmother ever. So I don't know what she looked like. 
He said he had never told anyone about the lady ever. He had only said that in the dream a lady called his name. But when I told him my story, I could literally see in his eyes how scared I could see the fear. Later I called up my aunts asking for my great grandmother's picture since I was very keen to know what she looked like. I told my mom too to check through the old family albums that we had. After frantically searching through all the albums, finally, mom showed me a picture saying, Here, this is your maternal great grandmother. My uncle also confirmed that it's her. I took the picture in my hand, and my heart stopped. It was the same lady, and the scariest part is that she was wearing a wedding dress in the picture too, but the flowers were not there. Later that same night, I asked my mom and my uncle did she do something bad, so they told me that she used to believe in black magic. After that day, my mom said a few prayers, and then I stopped getting that dream. That sounds awful. Particularly your mom being so scared of this woman in the dream, hiding from her and going, has she arrived yet? Is she here yet? And then this woman in a wedding dress appeared. I mean, that is classic horror movie stuff, a woman in a wedding dress, you know? That is like lady in white territory. I never really know if the validation of somebody else in your family seeing the same thing is a good thing or a bad thing. Because if you don't get that validation, you can just accept that it's just a scary dream that happened or just a a dream. It doesn't even have to be scary. And then you move on. But hearing somebody else having the exact same experience, the exact same dream, seeing the same woman is terrifying, really. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to James, Dennis, Kai, Heather, Connor and Adriel for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from October the 28th, 2021. If you are desperate for more content, you can sign up to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash real life ghost stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get every single episode of Real Life Ghost Stories ad free and access to heaps of extra content. If you want to know anything about Real Life Ghost Stories Podcast, you can check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And on that note, I shall see you next time. Macy's one day sale is going on now with great deals of the day to get prepped for the spring season. Like 40% off wardrobe refreshes from Style Co. And 40% off the perfect bags and wallets to complete your look. Plus get 50 to 60% off kitchen and dining essentials from Hotel Collection, Oak, The Cellar, and more. Star Rewards members earn rewards even faster during Macy's Star Money bonus days. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. So, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando Resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 US and DC. 18 plus entered by 4223. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited.